Hi everybody, this is Buster Posey and we're going to be doing uh, bias and variability on statistics. Okay, first though, here's board problem 43. I wish it was 28. Do you know 28 is a perfect number, by the way, because 1 goes into 28, 2 does, 4 does, 7 does, 14 does, and 1 plus 2 plus 4 plus 7 plus 14 equals 28. It's a perfect number. Okay, uh, so board problem 28, or 43, I'm sorry. The probability that a 3-year-old battery still works is 0.8. A certain flashlight takes four working batteries. The batteries are independent and are selected for the flashlight. What's the probability that the flashlight works? Okay, and so what you're going to do is since uh, each one has a probability of 0.8, it's 0.8 to the fourth. That's supposed to be a decimal right there, not a comma. 0.8 to the fourth. So you get choice, G, choice D on that, okay? All right, so uh, describing sampling distribution and the bias of variability of a statistics, okay? So section A, are you a survivor fam? This is example 9.5 on pages uh, 494 to 496. And... Uh, television executives and companies who advertise on TV are interested in how many viewers watch a particular television show. That way they can uh, charge more for their commercials. According to the 2001 Nielsen's rating, Survivor 2 was one of the most watched television shows in the United States during every week that it aired. Suppose that the true proportion of U.S. adults who watch Survivor is 37%, 0.37. Okay, and P is always your true proportion, you guys, your population proportion. Figure 9.5 shows the results of drawing a thousand SRSs of size 100 from a population with P being uh, the population proportion being 37%. Okay, I have that picture on the other side right here. Okay, so here we are, uh, the sampling proportions, and so these are a thousand of them, the thousand of the SRSs, and, um, uh, and so here's the sampling proportions right here. Okay, and uh, so, so for example, it looks like about um, uh, a little over a hundred of these thousands uh, uh, scored in the 31%. So the 37% uh, looks like over 200, about 220 of the SRS is scored in that. Okay, so there it is, nice and bell-shaped curve right there because there's a thousand of them. It's a lot of them. All right, so the, from the figure, we can see that the overall shape and distribution is symmetrical and approximately normal. That's pretty gosh darn belly. Okay, the center of the distribution is very close to the true uh, population proportion of 37% for the population for which the samples were drawn. In fact, the mean of those thousands of the P hat is 0.372. Okay, that's pretty darn close. And their median is exactly 0 0.370. All right, pretty close. So uh, the values of uh, uh, the sample proportions, that's what P hat is, have a large spread. They range from 22 over here, 22%, all the way up to 54% over here. Okay, because the distribution is close to normal, we can use the standard deviation to describe its spread. Okay, we're going to use this number in just a little bit. The standard deviation is about 0 0.05. Okay, we're going to use that number in just a little bit. All right, so uh, there are no outliers or other important deviations from this overall pattern. It looks looks good, okay? So um, so write this down. Notice that uh, the value of P hat in the figure above has a large spread from 22% to 54%. That's pretty large, you guys. This came from 1,000 SRSs of size 100. So what we're going to do is increase this. So here's figure uh, 9.6. It shows 1,000 SRSs of size 1,000 this time. Uh, both figures have centers close to the parameter of 37%. So here's a thousand thousands. Look at that. Okay, kind of looks like someone's flipping the bird there. Sorry, I shouldn't say that. Uh, <clears throat> the spread in figure 9.6 is much less than uh, in figure 9.5. Isn't it much less? It only goes from, looks like about 30-something um, uh, 30, 30 percent all the way up to 40-something uh, percent. Whoops, that decimal right there shouldn't be there. So let me take that little rat out of there. Right there, it should be 0.421. Right there, let me take that out. Okay, okay, so it goes, uh, the spread goes from 0.321 to 0.421. Also, the standard deviation decreased from the, remember it was 0.05 in the last one, now it's 0.016 on this one. All right, so figure 9.7 shows the same information as the one we were just looking at, but it expands the scale so it makes it look more clear. So there's the scale expanded, you guys, so we didn't have that tall skyscraper. Um, we split up these, uh, they went from, um, let's see, let me go back here. Uh, it went from, uh, you know, here's three percentage jumps right here from 37 to 40%. And so 
these guys are only going uh, by one percentage each jump. Okay, so it spread them out a little bit and took out that skyscraper right there. Okay, the distribution is approximately normal. Uh, a statistics used to estimate a parameter is unbiased if the mean of its sampling distribution is equal to the true value of the parameter being estimated. Okay, so it's unbiased that way. Sometimes these quote unbiased statistics fall above or below the true value of the parameter, especially when we take many samples. Okay, we'll talk about that in a second. The variability of a statistic is described by the spread, which is the mean, the median. That's the median. Whoops, there's another typo right there. The median. Uh, uh, it, uh, and the range of its sampling distribution. Okay, so that would be the very uh, the spread. Okay, and that's the variability of the statistics. You describe it by the mean, the median, and the and the range. Okay, that's still median. Uh, um, and so the spread is determined by the sampling uh, design of the size of the sample. Okay. And the variability of the sampling results uh, uh, decrease for larger samples. Well, that makes sense. Okay, variability shrinks when you de uh, make larger samples. Okay, more on Survivor 2. Okay, recall the 68, 95, 99.7 rule? Probably not. There's my door sliding in the background. It's a windy day today. Uh, it says that 95% of all values of P will fall within two standard deviations of the mean. Remember, the 68 is three standard deviations of the mean. Uh, I'm sorry, this is um, one standard deviation of the mean, this is two standard deviations of the mean, and this is three standard deviations of the mean. Alrighty? So, uh, so here's number one. Within 1,000 SRSs of 100, uh, remember the standard deviation was 0.05, so that 37% um, uh, means if I do 2 times 0.05, because it falls within two standard deviations, uh, that tells me that 95% uh, of the data, because 95% of the data is within two standard deviations, when I multiply 2 times 0.05, it gets me 10%. So 37% minus 10% is 27%, and 37% plus 10%, that's why it's plus or minus, is 47%. Okay, so 95% of the data goes from 27 to 47%, which is not very accurate. So when we increased it to 1,000 SRSs of 1,000, size 1,000, it decreased our standard deviation. So when I do 2 times 0.016 and do 37 plus or minus that, it makes 95% of the data 35.4 to 38.6. That's a lot better, you guys, a lot more reasonable. And when you're talking about millions of dollars in commercials, they want more uh, fine-tuned facts. They don't want this would be too much for it to be paying millions of dollars in commercials. They'd rather have you know something that's even closer to that. When you're talking money, they want bullseye stuff. Okay, speaking of bullseye, bullseye bias and variability. Think of a target being the population and the arrow being shot at the target. Okay, bias means that our aim is off, but we consistently miss in the same spot. It reminds me of a good old Andy Griffith show. Uh, maybe I'll show you one day. Uh, okay, high variability means that the repeated shots are widely scattered on the target. So if they're widely scattered, it's high variability. Okay, and so this is what they are all together. Low variability means the shots are close together. High variability means the shots are widely scattered. Low bias means shots centered on the bullseye. High bias means shots consistently away from the bullseye but in the same direction. So here's a figure, 0.99 on page 500 right here. Okay, so here's high bias, low variability. Here's uh, low bias, high variability. Here's uh, the ideal basis right here, low bias, low variability. And this one's high bias, high variability. Okay, all right. So, um, so review so far that we've been doing here. Okay, a number that describes a population is called a parameter, and that's what equals P. A number that can be computed from the same uh, data is called a statistics and is used to make statements about the unknown parameter. Okay, so um, it's, a, it's a sample, so it would be p hat. Okay, a sample distribution describes how the statistics varies in repeated data productions and answers the question, what would happen if we repeated the sample experiment many times, increase the numbers? Okay, and then a uh, statistic, uh, as, a, as an estimator of the parameter, may suffer from bias and or high variability. Bias means that the center of the sample distribution is not equal to the true value of the parameter. And variability describes the spread of the sampling distribution. Okay, and then finally, uh, properly chosen statistics produces less bias. The variability of the statistics is determined by the size of the sample. Statistics from larger samples have less variability. Play ball.